Thank you, Mark. So do they get these records? Do they get records of contract terms before a contract is finalized? Case law says no. I've given you a lot of case law in my motion. Uh, Mr. Reisner's given you nothing but generalities. Uh, the Bellow case is, I believe, a privacy case, not a best interest of the city case. I think it was private information. Uh, you've got Matthews v. Pyle, and you've got Carlson v. Pima County, which is how we created exceptions to the statutory uh, presumption of public uh, openness. We agree that there's a presumption, but we also agree that Matthews v. Pyle and Carlson both clearly say there are exceptions. And it's a misstatement of law by Mr. Reisner to say that they don't exist. And one of them is best interests of the city, and one of the subgroups of best interests of the city is contract terms. Uh, I, he says we haven't shown why there's any uh, detriment. Well, two of our witnesses said that other parties knowing the terms that we're potentially offering is before uh, we have a final contract is a bad thing. Everybody knows that when they deal with a public entity that the contract is going to eventually be public if there's a deal. But there's not always going to be a deal. And we don't have to, first we don't have to negotiate with uh, everybody looking over our shoulder. And we also don't suddenly have to reveal how we would negotiate to everybody during the time we're still negotiating a deal. And the case law is... Let me ask you, do you have to negotiate with at least the possibility that somebody will look over your shoulder later, even if there is no deal? If I don't... Because there was testing, let me finish. And then sure. I'll give you a chance I, no, for, I, I want to let you finish. Uh, Mr. Miranda testified, I think, and to be honest with you, it's been a long day and I can't remember exactly who asked the question. It might have been Mr. Reisner. If the deal never goes through, does that mean nobody ever finds out about it? Well, assuming there's a public records request? Right, assuming there's a public records request. Uh, I think it would depend what the information is. Is it, is it in the best interest of the city that um, it not be out? I, I, I need to ask Your Honor a question, and if you don't want to answer, you can tell me to buzz off. I, I don't know a lot about I don't your background. I'll say it that way. <laughs> my, uh, I don't know a lot about your background, but my understanding is you either have done commercial law or you've done commercial litigation. I won't. I, I've never been asked a question about my background on the bench. Uh, I, uh, I ask it only because I'm going to argue something that I. I if you've done those, I think you're going to understand. And even if you haven't, you're going to understand. But if you have, you're really going to understand. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll, I, think, I think my background can be found if somebody wants to look hard. Good deal. I'm not going to answer the question. Okay. Just go ahead and make your argument. Great. Other parties are going to, any, anybody uh, would love to know if they're the next negotiating partner <coughs> with us, certain information. They'd love to know certain numbers. And, or they'd love to know certain lease terms or what interest rate we're going to offer. And right now, right here, we're sitting not knowing uh, what GCU is going to do. They've said they're still interested in Tucson. Mr. Casalimas told you that. We've still got property terms out there. They haven't told us to buzz off. And here we are with Mr. Reisner wanting to have us give information which people would love to have. Just think about it hypothetically. If you're the next negotiating person, wouldn't you love to know some of these numbers, terms, uh, durations of whatever term? It would be great to know. But can't I get that information? Isn't that information available by looking at contracts you do in Yes, but it won't necessarily be the same information. Every case and contract is going to be specific. And it, every, every one of those is going to have things in it which would, might be useful for someone else to know if they were going to be negotiating, negotiating with the city. Eventually, if we come to a deal, we'll have to release that. But I don't think we have to release it under the law while we're still negotiating or while, while we still have terms outstanding. 
Does GCU have a confidentiality agreement? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I, I mean, can they reveal what's in what you provided? Um, I suppose they could, but I think they're going to be in the same position we are. They're, that's they're not going to be very popular if they start <coughs> doing that. I think that's a bad business decision. I don't know legally whether they could or not. We can't require them to not reveal things. I don't think. Okay. Go ahead. Um, other cities would love, will, will love to know things. We've, we've told, we, again, back to Mr. Reisner claiming we've never said what the detriment is. We've, we've said what the significant detriment is. Other parties, other cities, um, dealing with that, with Grand Canyon as an example or another negotiating partner, undercutting us, knowing our terms so they know what to focus on, how, how to frame things, what to argue, uh, and other cities looking at Tucson. This is just how cities do it. Mr. Reisner acts like this is some amazing thing that happens, that staff goes out and does things without asking every detail of Marin Council. Well, that's the way manager systems work. And they get approval, and they get direction when they need it. And the fact that they don't uh, have go every moment and ask questions and say, well, can I do this, that would, that would, there's no way that anybody could operate in that environment. That's just not how the manager system works, nor, nor would it work. Um, you've seen no cases by plaintiffs saying that public entities can be required to negotiate in the open prior to completion of the contract. Nothing. He didn't say anything in his written pleadings, and he didn't say anything here. He's giving you generalities about the presumption, and I've given you specifics about the problems when we have this situation. And we think we have a significant uh, detriment, if, if there's release, that outweighs the phantom, never explained right to view things that uh, is present here. They never presented any counter evidence. The case law is consistent in saying exactly the opposite, that we cannot be required to negotiate in the open prior to, to uh, completion of the contract. Again, I just want to tell you hypothetically, all the terms that Mr. Casalinas was talking about, price, interest rates, incentives, um, when we're in the middle of negotiation and, and those come out, it's going to hurt us. And it's going to hurt us in the with the next person we try to negotiate with, and it's going to hurt us in the next negotiation we do later, because we're going, to have, we're going to be known as the big mouth. There's just no reason that should come out. Um, as I said, everybody knows that eventually the terms of deals that are completed will be known. That's, a public, that's going to be a public record. But we don't have to reveal them while we're still in negotiation. And it's a misstatement of law to say that we do. And it's a significant impairment if we're required to. And I would ask you to so find. <coughs> 